ball was a sign of weakness and showed a decision a team lacked confidence in its offense. Beautiful day for football, overcast, 71 degrees, winds 15 miles per hour out of the southwest. Doug DeBose will return the kick. He'll be back with number 21, Paul Miles. Number 21, Paul Miles, number 22. Kicking off, Larry Eckel for Colorado. Larry Eckel has had only 10 of his 28 kickoffs returned this year. He has become an expert of sorts, confusing the returner. He aims for the corner quite a bit. He's only knocked it out of bounds twice, though, Cooper. Eckel is a straight-ahead kicker, and he's not your typical kicker. He is 5'11", 220 pounds. He bench presses over 400 pounds. He's uh, got a little belly on him right now, but when he comes down the field, he is like a guy who will come in and break up the wedge for you. He's not your typical key sheeting kicker. Von Shepard was the kickoff returner for Nebraska earlier in the season. They have taken him off and replaced him with DeBose and Miles because they are sure-handed. So as the ball blows off the tee, they'll go after it again and set it up. If it blows off again, then they'll have to get somebody to hold it. 15 mile per hour wind out of the southwest. Miles and DeBose don't have the great speed, but they are sure-handed, so they're sacrificing speed for safety. Both clubs, five and one, undefeated in the Big Eight, we're underway. It'll be DeBose, and he will not return it. So make it only 10 of 29 kickoffs have been returned against Echo. The offensive talent, McCather, DuBose, his talent's well documented, and Lindstrom, who is a strong, strong receiver. Rathman, the fullback, mostly blocker. Schnitzler, of course, good speed, 5'9", 170-pounder. Big, strong offensive line. They run the eye. And they'll run it at you and challenge you, saying we're coming straight ahead. Now stop us. This is DeBose, left side. Gain of about five yards. Aaron Schubeck of Lakewood, Colorado, makes the tackle. Tight end is Tom Frayne. As they go across that offensive front, I will tell you they are 275, 270, 275, 250, and 275. They just lean on you and make you tired. Von Shepard, Rod Smith come into the ball game. Again, it is DuBose, left side. Remington makes the tackle, and you will see a lot of Barry Remington. He is the leading tackler for the Buffaloes. 6'4", 225-pounder. Barry Remington will lead you to the football. As you said, he's the leading tackler on the team. Very active at his inside linebacker position as has been Darren Schubeck, the outside linebacker, Sports Illustrated's player of the week two weeks ago. Colorado defense, Paul Miles comes in for Nebraska. He's at the wing, the bottom of your set. The fake to Rathman, Clayton. The pitch back to Miles. Miles has running room to midfield and knocked out of bounds on the 46 in Colorado territory before Solomon Wilcox can knock him out of bounds. Paul Miles, number 21. A crack back block springs Paul Miles, the tailback, on a pitch out. And now his foot speed to the outside is what gets him a big gainer. He's finally brought down by Solomon Wilcotts, number 29, along the right sideline. First and 10 at the 45. Straight ahead, Tom Rathman. Tom Rathman on one of the typical fullback plays out of the I formation at 220 pounds. He has the size you like. Very similar to Mark Shaleen, who played that position two years ago when they had that all-world backfield. Remember that in 1983? Absolutely. You know, we were talking prior to the game how important we thought it was for Colorado to score first, but it is Nebraska that is in the four-down area in Colorado territory. As DeBose comes back in the ball game on second and eight, Tom Rathman up right side. Gets a couple before Kurt Koch. Stutz. Coke is quite a story. Boxes as an amateur. Was a Golden Gloves boxer. Has good speed and quickness at 260 pounds playing his right tackle position. How would you like to get in the ring with him at 6'7", 260 pounds? He's literally a Coke machine. He's only a sophomore. Third and seven for Nebraska. The ball on the 42. This is DeBose. Cuts back inside and he won't get it. Don Fairbanks 
made the play, scraped off nicely, and cut to Bo short of the first down. Fairbanks, recruited by Chuck, no relation. Looks like closer look at Don Fairbanks there as we go to Bill McCartney, who is playing this one with pain. Well, he didn't come to practice last night and just barely made it for the kickoff. He's got a chronic back ailment, and when he was brushing his teeth yesterday, his back slipped out on him. So it's fourth and four. Wingard is on to punt. Wingard in the last three ball games has become one of the nation's leaders, averaging 48 yards of punt over those last three games, and he kicks this one out. So Colorado will now go offensively, and finally, the secret will be solved. The quarterback will be number seven, Rick Wheeler. Wheeler is a sophomore out of Englewood. 6'3", 195 pounder, came in in the fourth play of the first series last week against Iowa State when Mark Hatcher was injured, and he performed admirably. Scored a touchdown rushing, one passing. Rick Wheeler, first down at the 20. This is the wishbone offense. Fake to the fullback, pitch outside. And Sam Smith is close to a first down. Rick Wheeler, there he is. He is the quarterback. Ron Brown, the fastest man on the team, has 4-2-9 speed. And Sam Smith, the running back we saw. Look at Eric McCartney. Looks like he's been in Nebraska before. The wide receiver, split end is Loy Alexander. And in the wishbone, you only have one wide out. Everybody else is in tight. This time, they've got two tight ends, the full house, the bone. And I like this cover, the wishbone attack. Fake inside on first down. This is Wheeler across midfield and into Nebraska territory. Scott Tucker is the man who made the tackle. Tucker now coming off a sprained ankle that he injured in practice this week. As I mentioned at the top of the show, nothing mysterious about the wishbone. They rely on execution, and about 70% of their plays are just like this. The triple option. This is part two of the triple option as Wheeler breaks two tackles, heads back upfield, and ultimately is brought down by Scott Tucker, number 89 in the secondary, after a big gainer. So they're doing exactly what they hoped they would do, and that's control the football on the ground, predominantly with option plays. First down at the 47. The give inside of the fullback, Eric McCarty. He picks up about four or five. A big, strong offensive line. Now, we told you how strong the Nebraska line is. As you look at this group, they call them the mules. Pat Ryan is 270. Junior Ely is 260. Eric Coyle, the center, is 270. He's a junior. Chris Simington is 270. And James Webb is 270. So that is a load. And you can see, too, why they call them the mules. Second and six at the 43. This is Brown. Cuts inside. First down, Colorado. Mike Knox, Mark Munford. The linebackers for Nebraska come up to make the tackle. And those two are Colorado natives, so they've got a little extra incentive today playing against the home staters. You talked earlier about Ron Brown's speed. I think he might be one of the keys today because if they get the ball to him wide and in the open field, he's a threat to go the distance any time he has his hands on the football. And that includes coming out of the backfield as a receiver. Ron Brown comes out. Mike Marcus comes in. Again, two tight ends. It is the complete bone. Fumble. And it looks like Nebraska's got it. Jim Scow, the defensive tackle, made the hit. Forced it loose from the quarterback, and therein lies one of the problems of the wishbone offense. When you put that ball on the hip of the fullback and ride and read, the ball often comes loose. And Jim Scow not only knocked it loose, he received the fumble as well. Defensive right tackle Jim Scow, number 96, is right in the backfield as he tees off on Eric McCarty strips the football, and then covers the ball himself for a great defensive effort. Colorado continues to be plagued by the turnover. They are minus two in that category. Dr. Tom Osborne, now in his 13th season as Nebraska's head coach. Look at that winning percentage. Hand-picked by Tom Devaney, his predecessor. Bob Devaney. I mean, Bob Devaney. Tom underwent bypass surgery earlier this year. Long, lean, and lanky. Looks good. First and 10, ball on the 39 for Nebraska. This is DeBose. Great play by Kyle Rappold. 
Number 91. Only 5'11", but he's 245 pounds. They call him the trash compactor. Trash compactor, that's right. We've got the refrigerator in the National Football League, and here we've got the trash compactor. Von Shepard comes into the ball game for Nebraska number two. He's a flyer. That means he's trashed a few ball carriers. Rod Smith comes to the bottom of the screen. I formation, second and 11. McCathern Clayton to throw. Screen man's taken away one side, goes to the back side. This is Rathman, has running room, picks up a block. Across midfield and back into Colorado territory before Rod Rogers can take him down at the 46-yard line. Good job of acting by quarterback McCathern Clayton. On the double screen play, he looks to his right, throws out to Tom Rathman, number 26, his fullback. Rathman, not your basic breakaway threat. Shows that he has a little open field ability as he gets in behind Blankenship and Roth. Turns it into a good game. First down, 46-yard line to Bo straight ahead. Picks up most of the 10 yards he needs for another first down. Lyle Pickens makes the tackle. He'll be about a yard shy. That, of course, being one of the base plays in the I formation, the blast play or isolation, as it is sometimes called, simply means he goes off behind his, uh, his linemen who uh, isolate on the men in front of him. Second and two, waist down. In other words, they can always come back on third to pick up the first. Instead, they just pitch back to DeBose. He's got the first down and then some. Ping pong match thus far. Both teams have been in the other's territory. Nebraska for the second time. 8.52 to go, first period. That's the same play we saw in our pregame show, and the two key elements of that are the lead block by the fullback, Rathman, and the kickout block by the guard, Blankenship. And just as we saw earlier, DuBose turns it into a good gainer. I don't think I've seen DuBose run better. He had 199 yards last week against Rumble. Missouri, but he fumbles. I think he got it back. I think we jinxed him. Every time you say something nice about somebody, it seems to be a jinx. DuBose from his eye back position takes the handoff with some depth in the backfield and he never got the handle on the ball. He does show some good reaction though. He turns back very quickly, grabs it, and saves the possession for Nebraska. So they lose a yard. It'll be second and 11. The ball resting just inside the 30. That appeared to me to be just simply a breakdown in concentration. First genuine threat of the ball game down to the 29 yard line as Clayton calls out the cadence. Fakes inside, goes for it all. Incomplete, out of bounds. Intended for Roger Lindstrom. But when he made the catch, he was out of bounds, no good. So it'll bring down third down and 11. Perfect touch and timing pass on the fade pattern along the left sideline, but it was just thrown too wide. Had the nice soft looping trajectory. The timing was perfect. He's got to keep him inside the boundary. When we talked with Tom Osborne yesterday, he mentioned the fact that the passing game was not in sync last week against Missouri, and that, in fact, was their major deficiency. They couldn't push it across the goal line because the passing game was out of rhythm. On third and 11, Clayton to throw. Has a man. Incomplete. Overthrown. Did not even see Todd Frayn across the middle, who was wide open. Instead, he went to Von Shepard, who had two defenders on him. Well, on the crisscross pattern, one player is usually more open than the other. That time, he, he read the coverage wrong. And as you pointed out, Von Shepard was not the man to go to. Well, here he is, the man of the hour. Dale Klein comes on, 6'1", 195-pound sophomore. He's a walk-on who had seven straight field goals last week against Missouri. Six for six inside the 45-yard line, and this one, plenty of distance, but it's no good to the left. Well, how do you do? We talked to him yesterday, and he said his first kick is paramount. If he hits it, He's high in his confidence. If he misses it, he'll struggle the rest of the afternoon. Scoreless ball game at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. 8-16 remaining in the first quarter. Colorado has the football. Dale Klein has just missed a 46-yarder, and it breaks his streak. He had nine straight. 
Rick Wheeler is still your quarterback for Colorado. The fake inside, the option he end. And Wheeler picks up about four. Now therein lies one of the strengths of the bone. First of all, in this time of sophisticated defenses, the defense really can't guess on what you're going to do. You start out the same way every time. The quarterback reads the defensive tackle, reacts upon what he does. If he stays at home, then he just goes down and options the end and still has a, a turn-up responsibility, or he can pitch it out. That's a good point. We will uh, now go to some of the weaknesses of the bone <laughs> shortly. Second and six, little reverse counter. And Ron Brown is met rather rudely in the hole. Nebraska defense, very strong, traditionally. Reeves, Spockman, Noonan, Scow, who was the player of the week last week. Tucker, Knox, and Munford are the linebackers. And the defensive backfield, Davis, Carl, Siebler, and Washington. Defensive ends for Colorado have been very banged up. Four top defensive ends are all playing hurt. Tony Holloway is not even in the ball game. Number six you just saw there, catcher on third and four. They give inside, no, he keeps it. Nice fake, first down, Colorado. There is another one of the strengths of the wishbone if you have the right athlete at the quarterback position. I personally have never been a great fan of the wishbone, but then I wasn't much of a running quarterback. I was a passing quarterback, and uh, I've always preferred to have more multiplicity and flexibility in the offense. Well, it's also a balanced attack. First down, Wheeler to throw, tip pass, and it bounces. Will they call it incomplete? No, they call it a catch. Well, they call it a catch. Loy Alexander scooped it in. First down, Colorado. And I think that ball hit the ground. I do, too. I can't wait to see it on the replay. Here is the tip right here as Wheeler stands very close to the line of scrimmage. The ball tipped with the left hand of Spockman, number uh, 76. Now let's watch as Alexander comes forward and appears to trap the football. Oh, good catch. Good catch. He got under it. First down to 44. This is Wheeler. Wheeler picks up about eight before Brian Davis comes up and hits him, and he may be hurt. Rick Wheeler is grabbing his leg. He may be hurt. This is a good look at the triple option from the end zone. This is part two as Wheeler looks to the outside. The coverage is there. He gets a real shot in the secondary from Brian Davis, number 32. And he's down. Looks Craig like Keenan will come into the ball game, Cupper, as they work on Rick Wheeler. So now Wheeler is hurt. Hatcher was hurt last week. Now they come to Craig Keenan. He was the starter last year. Not a bone quarterback. He's a thrower. Jim Lampley in New York. Oklahoma State has scored its first Big 8 victory of the season with less than two minutes left. This Thurman Thomas run capped the 45-yard drive in which Thomas accounted for 43 of the yards. It snapped a 10-10 tie and gave the Cowboys a 17-10 win. Back to Lincoln. Second and three, new quarterback. It's Craig Keenan. The give inside is Smith. And he's got the first down for Colorado. Now even Keenan, who started last year, missed some practice time this week because he was ill. There's Rick Wheeler. They're working on a leg, and it doesn't look good. They had to help him off the field, practically practically carry him couldn't put any weight on that leg but we won't speculate so Mark Hatcher who went down last week with an avulsion fracture meaning a tear of the ankle is now followed by Wheeler who also appears to have a leg injury first and ten at the 31 Keenan throws and it's complete John Embry down to the 21 yard line and now it is Colorado that is threatening Keenan was the starter the final four games for Colorado last year. Threw for over 1,000 yards. Play fake to the fullback. Embry, the tight end on a slant out pattern, gets in front of number 42, Mike Carl, in the secondary, and the ball was thrown with perfect timing. Embry, strangely enough, the leading receiver on the team with three receptions on the seasons, which says a little something about their passing game. Passing game in the wishbone has been pretty much nondescript. 
First down, Buffaloes. You know, you make a good point, Cup, but the key is last year when it was a throwing offensive attack, multiple offense, Embry was one of the leading pass receivers in the Big 8 Conference. He had 51. And so it's been a big sacrifice, not only for Embry, but for guys like Brown, who have now gone into the wishbone. And I think that they would trade that the statistics for the success. Oh, absolutely. The bottom line is always winning. And I think Bill McCartney did the right thing. He took a look around, and he saw some teams winning with the wishbone. He evaluated his personnel, and he decided on the switch. Nebraska in a 5-2 scheme. First down. Keenan has nowhere to run. Inside the 20 go the Buffaloes. It'll be second and about nine. Some of the scores coming in. Iowa leads Northwestern 7-0 second quarter. West Virginia Penn State scores. Michigan is strong. against South Carolina. Mississippi State and Auburn. Still scoreless. Air Force leads Utah 7-0. And Air Force runs this same offensive attack. Keenan the throw on second and nine. Embry complete inside the five-yard line is John Embry. And there's a flag. Well, we talked about how important we thought it was for Colorado to score first to boost their confidence, number one, and secondly, to take the crowd out of the ball game. Here's the call. Well, we can't hear J.C. Lauterbach, our referee. John Embry, the tight end on the right, First is running down. a sideline cut. Decline. And once again, gets in front of number 45, Chris Carr. And the ball by Keenan was thrown perfectly. It had to be right there. Well, the call he, was... He had to drill it. Carr was riding his back. So obviously it's declined. It is against Nebraska. And it gives the Buffaloes first and goal at the two. Keenan fakes inside, follows it in, and he's close to the goal line. Touchdown, Colorado! Start doing your mental gymnastics, and Colorado will be pumped up and ready to ride. That's his first touchdown of the year, Keenan's. What an admirable job he did coming in to replace Rick Wheeler, who was injured. Larry Echo comes on to attempt the extra point. Snap is good, the hold is good, and the kick is good. And the Colorado Buffaloes are on the board. So surprise, surprise, Colorado with a 5-1 record have scored first here in Nebraska. Four minutes, five seconds remaining in the first quarter, and look at that. Colorado 7, Nebraska nothing. Led by that man right there, Craig Keenan. Admirable performance, came in and under a lot of pressure. Larry Echo will kick off. Dubose and Miles, deep for Nebraska. It's Dubose at the 1. The 20. The 30. Across the 40 to the 44-yard line goes Doug Dubose. 43-yard return. David Tate made the tackle, but what a run by Dubose. Doug Dubose taking a page out of Johnny Rogers here. Normally an eye back, he's also a threat as a return specialist. He makes a quick move to his left, finds some open field right there, breaks one tackle, and then finally it's David Tate, number 23, who brings him down. First down at the 44, Nebraska. DeBose, absolutely nothing. Don McMillan penetrated and made a marvelous play for the Buffs. Dan McMillan. Going back to the touchdown, watch quarterback Craig Keenan, number 14, on part two of the triple option. He bounces right there off of his right guard, slides to the outside, and with a second and third effort, scratches and claws his way into the end zone for touchdown number one. Second and 11, reverse. This is Nebraska, Rob Schnitzler, and he is in trouble. Nailed at the 40. Oh, Doug Fairbanks came in a hurry, and David Tate was there to assist. 
We talked at the top of the show about how if Colorado wanted to pull an upset today, they would have to control and dominate the line of scrimmage. They lead now in the rushing department 71 to 55, and you can see that they are reacting defensively. Look at the swarm here by the Buffaloes. Snitzler on the reverse is brought down by Fairbanks with an assist from David Tate, number 23. Third and 14, Clayton. He's got quick feet back there. Has a man open, but he's incomplete, out of bounds. Again, Roger Lindstrom made the catch, but he was out of bounds when he came down with it. Second time this game. Well, it's very early in the game, but it's exciting to watch what Colorado is doing. They were, in some circles, Tim, a 25-point underdog. So Dan Winger, number 47, comes on to punt. He's got a 42-yard average. He had his longest punt of the year last week in Missouri, a 70-yarder. JoJo Collins, number 16, is deep for Colorado. High squiggly kick taken by Collins on the 25. And he'll return it about three yards, and that'll be it. Tom Rathman, the fullback, number 26, was there to make the tackle. Colorado scoring drive. Ten plays, 70 yards, methodical. Four minutes and 11 seconds. I like the drive. Good execution and also good diversification. Nice mixture of plays on the drive. Game six. Our good friend Al Michaels, Tim McCarver, and Jim Palmer are there. World Series action continues tonight. St. Louis Cardinals and the Kansas City Royals. Action begins live at 8 o'clock Eastern time right here on ABC Sports. The Show Me Series goes to game number six. It's been a fun series to watch, as this game has been. Colorado, Eric McCarty picks up a few right side. Are you surprised? You know, I'm a little surprised, but I thought in watching Colorado that the strength of their team, and I said this at the top of the show, was in their offensive line. We've talked about the size and the experience of that offensive line, and if they could get out of the blocks early, and win the battle of the trenches that they might have a chance. The momentum is going their way right now in the first quarter. Second and eight, Keenan cuts it up and carries himself and not a whole lot going there. One thing Nebraska does do extremely well, well on defense they do a lot of things extremely well. Number one against the run last year nationally and number one against scoring. Again this year they are an aggressive defense. The point I was going to make, Knox and Munford at linebackers run to the football about as well as I've seen any linebackers this year. That linebacker tandem is excellent, and they like the down linemen. Knox and Munford both from the state of Colorado. 117 remains in the first quarter, third and four. Mike Marcus comes into the full house backfield. This is the bone. Fake inside. Again, it's Keenan. He's not going to get it. No, sir, it's not there. Barry Helton will come on, number nine, to kick it away. And all of a sudden, the homecoming crowd of nearly 76,000 comes to its feet and is back to life. The sea of red that you spoke of early on, letting their presence be known, Barry Helton, an outstanding kicker, gets good hang time. This one, he just drives all the way back inside the 10. To the 14-yard line, Rob Schnitzler brings it back. He's out of Battle Creek. Dan McMillan makes the tackle. So good coverage by Colorado. Got a busy weekend coming, coming up for you here on ABC Sports Sunday. We have the New York City Marathon. Six-time winner, defending champion Greta Weitz and defending men's champion Orlando Pizzolatta leads the field in the New York City Marathon. That'll be live, 10.30 Eastern time. And then, of course, the seniors' finals and the men's match play at Tucson, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Paul Miles is into the ball game for Nebraska as the first quarter comes to a close. Ten seconds remain. Pick up of six, it'll be second and four as we head down the other end of the field. Down, 
Last year, the Buffaloes scored first. They led Nebraska 7-0 for three quarters and then lost 24-7 to Nebraska. So sit tight. There's more to come. It's Nebraska's turn offensively now, trailing 7-0 to Colorado. Tom Osborne, his own man offensively. When I say that, I mean that he calls all the offensive plays. Trying to save time so it's not translated down from the box and through everybody else. And they go straight ahead with Ken Kalen. Ken Kalen will be close to a first down. He'll be maybe a foot shy. He'll bring up third down and short. Todd Frayne comes into the ball game along with Bon Shepard for Nebraska. It'll be third and one. Ball on the 25. Just underway. Second quarter. Give inside is Paul Miles, and it seems he has enough for the first down. We pointed out early that if Colorado was going to pull an upset today, they would have to be able to move the chains, control the football. Look at the, the rushing yards here. They outgained Colorado, rather uh, Nebraska, 78 to 57, 117 to 71 total yards. Time of possession practically even. First down, the fake inside. The ball is loose. Miles recovers for Nebraska. Big loss for the Huskers. in mind Clayton is young six foot 195 pounds and he's prone to make mistakes miles from his eye back position is looking for the pitch but the ball is pitched well behind him and he wisely covers the football instead of trying to pick it up deep in his own territory Clayton was a red shirt sophomore last year got his first start the second game of this season so he hasn't been there long this is miles Gets a block, but it doesn't help too much. He gets back to the 20-yard line. It'll still bring up third down and a taxi ride for Nebraska. What's the pair? How much do you tip the guy on that ride? About 16 yards. Some tip. Rob Schlitzner. He's a wide out. They shoot, show two flexes. This is Clayton. Throws deep, has a man incomplete. Todd Frayne had worked himself free in the zone. The ball was there, but he was hit and dropped it. Watch the tight end on the right, number 80, Todd Frayne, on what is sometimes called a vertical stretch or seam pattern. Rodgers and Tate sandwich him and cut loose of the football. I'm telling you, Rod Rogers is the bell cow. He's only started one game, but he goes to the football. Abe Wingard is on to kick it away for Nebraska. High spiraling punt. JoJo Collins at the 27. Turns it up and runs out of bounds at the 30, and that's where Colorado will take over. Flag out of bounds. Collins may have been hit late by Tom Rathman. 53-yard punt. Collins returned it about 30 yards to gain four. Last part of the return here, as he goes out of bounds, you're going to see number 26, Tom Rathman, put a hit on him three yards out of bounds. That'll get your attention. Personal foul against Nebraska, so they'll move it up a little bit deeper. Colorado leads 7-0. And the Buffs have the ball. Jim Lampley in New York. Earlier, Auburn trailed Mississippi State 6-0, but now it is 14-6. One of the touchdowns of Bo Jackson's 22-yard run. Jackson in the first half, 16 carries for 84 yards. Press box menu at Auburn today. Ham with pineapple, potato salad, green beans, almondine, homemade rolls, and sheet cake. Tim Brandt. That's what I need on my diet lamps. <laughs> first and 10, 49. Keenan, going deep for Brown. Well, Brian Siebler was there, number 19 for Nebraska. Brown ran up his back, no flags. 
What do you think, Upper? Ron Brown on a circle fly pattern out of the backfield, a route that he has run very effectively, appears to run up the back of Brian Siebler, number 19, which Siebler claims would have been offensive pass interference. He's got a good point. Incidental contact. That's a, that's a catch-all phrase. I, I like that buzz phrase. <laughs> Second and ten, Buffaloes from the 49. Keenan. I personally agree with the call, though. You know, Keenan's strength is throwing the football. He is probably third or fourth on the list, running the bone behind Allen Strait, Mark Hatcher, and Rick Wheeler. Well, Hatcher is normally the starter. We talked about his emulsion fracture. Wheeler came out of the game with a leg injury, so now we're down to the third-string quarterback, Craig Keenan, but he has moved the team effectively, and right now the Buffaloes are dominating in this football game. They are doing what Nebraska normally does. They are controlling the ball with a strong running game, mixing in high percentage passes. Passing down on third and eight. They have two split outs now. The fake inside, no, the give. And pick up about five, they'll have to punt it away. Well, I don't understand that on third and eight. I thought Colorado would throw. Go to your strength. That to me is one of the real problems in the wishbone is that on third and obvious passing situations you are very limited as to the number of pass plays that you can utilize. Except that in the balanced attack of the bone, when you do send somebody out wide, it's usually just one-on-one man coverage. Fourth and five, 46, Winger will punt it away. He'll put it high and this will go into the end zone for a touchback. So they will bring it out to the 20-yard line. A 46-yard punt by Wingert. And Nebraska will have the football with 11-16 to go in the half. Colorado has gathered around to talk offense. And that's Jerry DiNardo, the offensive coordinator. We talked with him yesterday, Cooper. Very confident about what he's doing now at Colorado. Meanwhile, Nebraska has sputtered. Good strong run by DeBose that time. Post contact yardage about four. In other words, after he was initially hit, he went for about three more, four more. Second and five. Number 40, Barry Remington, the inside linebacker. He's the leading tackler on the team. He has the size you like, the instincts. And does he plug this one? Wow. Bose now has 27 yards and nine carries. Travis Turner is your quarterback. He pitches back to Doug DeBose. And DeBose has the first down for Nebraska. So now Nebraska changes quarterbacks. Doug DeBose in isolation gets one of his favorite plays, sometimes called student body right. He starts wide, cuts it up the field. Look at that. Spins there. Juke step, limp leg. It's Dan McMillan, number 50, who finally brings him down. Turner gives to DeBose again. Picks up four. Ball carried by Doug DeBose. This is Nebraska football. They line Michael up and dare you to come. Straight ahead, no fair dodging. Like that line. I've heard that one somewhere before. I think when we were covering the USFL, Jim Stanley said that. Jim Stanley of the Michigan Panthers. Travis Turner has replaced McCather Clayton in the backfield as the quarterback. He started the first game of the year against Florida State and has seen quite a bit of action since. More experienced type of back. This is Lindstrom. Lindstrom has the first down, but there is a flag, so we'll wait and see what that is. Turner split time with Sunberg last year at quarterback. No turnover type guy, very consistent, doesn't need as many reps at, in practice as does Clayton. Ran for two touchdowns, threw a touchdown pass in the fourth quarter to rally the Huskers for a win, 24-7. Of course, that was over, Colorado. Was the player of the week in that game. Big eight player of the week. Offside penalties declined. Offsides against Colorado declined as you look at some of the scores taking place around the country. Oklahoma. Look at Notre Dame. Big, big game. Army continues to run the 
Wishbone, 21 to 7. On first down, Turner with a long count. Reverse pivot, turns it upfield and gains five. All carried by Travis Turner. Don Fairbanks, number 55, has been busy for Colorado. Despite the fact that he's 255 pounds, he has four six feet in the 40-yard dash as we look at some other scores from around the country. Second and six, this is DeBose. Right side, close to a first down. All carried by Doug DeBose. This is an important drive for the Huskers because so far Colorado, as we mentioned, has been dominating the football game and they have been doing what Nebraska normally does. So the Huskers are starting to play their kind of football. Rutgers has beaten Richmond. Dartmouth and Cornell tied 17-17 fourth quarter. Brown and Holy Cross doing the same thing. 20-20. Bucknell over Columbia. 8.45 here in Nebraska, remaining in the first half. First down at the 46-yard line. Nebraska and Colorado Territory. Turner, Ron Shepard wide open. Inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. You run to set up the pass. The play fake is what freezes the secondary momentarily. And it's Vaughn Shepard who gets behind Rodney Rogers, number four. That pass, certainly no artistic success, but he got the job done. Fifth catch of the year for Vaughn Shepard. He's a flyer. First and 10, Nebraska at the 16. This is Miles. Hemmed in, thrown for a loss. Kirk Koch, I think, was the big guy who tracked him down from the big back side. 6'7", 260. That's a load to carry that far. Paul Miles, of course, was a starter last year at times playing ahead of Jeff Smith. DuBose, a backup, but despite the fact that he was a backup, he still led the Big 8 in rushing in 1984. Second and 10. Inside handoff is Rathman. He bangs his way down inside the 10-yard line. Watch the work of Blankenship and Roth along the left side as Rathman takes a quick-hitting trap play right there, bounces to the outside, and picks up valuable yardage on the quick-hitting pullback play. One of the big improvements I've seen this week over last week for Nebraska is Bill Lewis, the center. He is back, did not play last week. What a difference he makes. Tom Benderis and Todd Frayne come into the ball game for Nebraska. Tight ends and Turner to the one yard line. Fans think he was in there. Rodney Rogers, Solomon Wilcox don't think he was in. They're the defensive backs for Colorado play left side fake is first to the fullback Blankenship leads the way the cut is right there by Turner now watch him stretch now the rule is that if the ball Blake breaks the plane of the goal line it is a touchdown it is not first and goal at the one Turner quarterback sneak no signal Hit very quickly by Rappel, Remington, and Deluzio. It'll be second and goal. Goal line defense, the first line of defense. The down linemen have to penetrate, make a pile up, and let the linebackers fill. Turner, DeBose. No signal. Kevin Pauline 
Green came in and made the initial hit. Great effort by the down lineman to penetrate and establish a new line of scrimmage in the Nebraska backfield. The trash compactor got him. Swallowed up another one. It'll be third and goal from the one. Grappold and Reinhardt, sandwich. Nebraska loads up two tight ends. Wing back, I formation. DeBose, touchdown, Nebraska. Leading the way, DuBose takes the freeway instead of the frontage road. On in he goes to the end zone, flips the ball very casually to the official. That was not taunting. He just felt very happy to be in the end zone. Dale Klein comes on to attempt the extra point. Flag is down, the kick is good. One of the best combinations in college football. Cooper the snapper to Blakeman the holder to decline the extra point. The penalty is against Colorado. It is declined and we've got a tie ball game. Well, Colorado now knows one minute here you're picking, drinking the wine, the next minute you're stopping the grapes. On the left, Bill McCartney, the head coach at Colorado, 0-3 against the man on the right, Tom Osborne, head coach at Nebraska. But what a job McCartney's done in turning this Colorado program around. McCartney was unavailable to visit with us yesterday because, as you mentioned, he has been suffering from a reoccurring back problem as we look at Doug DeVos, the man who just scored the touchdown. Tom Osborne, one of the great coaches in all of college football, your was attention, was please, a quarterback Dr. at Hastings College three, in 1959. Played pro three, football three, with the 49ers three, and also with the Washington Warren. Redskins. He was a wide receiver when he played professional football. His son, Mike, is now a quarterback for Hastings College. And so they have now had four generations of Osbournes who have attended Hastings College, which is about 100 miles from here. You saw the numbers on the scoring drive. Colorado had taken a timeout to talk things over. They, for some reason, thought that they would see an onside Number kick. 47. And Winger really has not teed the ball up. You now the penalty, the penalty on the extra point is marked off at this juncture. The last time you saw this, Colorado kicking off in, I mean, Nebraska kicking off in Colorado territory. We told you the penalty was 12 men on the field against Colorado. So Nebraska kicks off in Buffs territory. Here's the onside kick they expected. And oh my, they can turn this loose. This is Mike Marquez. And had he gotten around Wingard, it would have been Katie Bar the door. He had some running, running room. Eight yards on the return and a very controversial play there. I'm not quite sure of the strategy. Tom Osborne with the score 7-7. Early on, why is he trying the onside kick? That uh, doesn't really fit with his personality. Tail end of the last play, and I think that you're going to see a face mask on Mike Marquez right there. And the play, that was not called. That was Dan Winger, who's normally the punter. Bottom line is great field position for the Buffaloes. And now they ball cross this field in the basket territory. Eric McCarty, the ball carrier. Spockman and Mumford leading the tackle. Second down, six. The ball is on the Nebraska 48. It'll be second and six, ball on the 48. 
7-7 if you're just joining us. Colorado and Nebraska. A little bit of a surprise. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Craig Keenan is the quarterback. Again, he gets to McCarty straight ahead. A statistical survey that was taken a few years ago proved that when you get the ball in this kind of opportune field position, in other words, inside the 50 yard line, you should score 70% of the time. Let's see if that statistic holds true. The impressive thing about Colorado is every time they've gotten inside the 20 this year, they score 20 out of 22 times. When they didn't, it was a big field goal. Keenan fakes. Does not get the first down. About a yard and a half shot. Once again, the Buffs are unsuccessful on a third down conversion. That's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, we'll see what kind of gambler. Yeah, we'll see what kind of gambler Bill McCartney is right now. He is going for it. Mike Marquez comes into the ball game. Ron Brown comes out. Fourth and one. First down, Colorado, I do believe. McCarty. McCarty has it. Tackle led by 35. And in the concept Parsons. of Colorado's wishbone, it is a total read on every play. So he is reading as he hands off to the fullback. Eric McCarty, number 32, right behind Illy and Ryan. The strength there of the offensive line. So that is a big fourth down conversion for the Buffs. 331 to play. Keenan to throw. It's complete to Smith inside the 40 to the 35 yard line. Sam Smith, 6'2, 205 pounder. Out of Aurora, Colorado. Keenan had no Keenan. clue, no clue there was pressure behind him. Keenan had no, no way of knowing that number 96, Jim Scow, was about to separate him from his ribs. And he dumped the ball off to Sam Smith. Second and four to 35. Reverse pivot, Smith down to the 31. And it'll be close to another first down for the Buffaloes. Well, they told me many years ago when I was in my 20s that the, the hits a quarterback takes in his 20s will be felt in his 40s. They were right. The true wishbone utilizes only one split end. The other wide receiver comes in to be the fullback. And the quarterback, as he comes down the line, first reads that defensive tackle. If he comes across, then he gives the ball to him. If he stays and plays the fullback, he comes down and reads the end and options him. Everybody in tight, third and one. First down, Colorado. Again, it's McCarty. So McCarty becomes the workhorse inside. With some wishbone teams, the reads are predetermined. But with Colorado, it is a read on every play. So that makes it tough on the defense. But it also makes it tough on the offense. It takes a special kind of athlete to play the quarterback position in the wishbone. There's your time in the first half. First down, Keenan. Loses five. Chris Spockman and Danny Noonan. Good penetration for Nebraska. Noonan lost his helmet. Irrelevant, he made the play. Spockman, Noonan, and Scow, the Huskers feel that they have three of the best down linemen defensively that they have had in some time. I agree with them. Second down, 16 yards to go for the Bucks. Not much there. Ron Brown, a little counter. Chad Dapper wasn't fooled. On that type of misdirection play, the timing is so important, and they did not have the proper timing in the backfield that time. Brown didn't get the handoff properly, and so therefore he had no chance to accelerate. 
Colorado working the clock, trying to melt it now. It'll be third and 15, the ball on the 32. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Offsides, Nebraska. Jim Scow looked like he got a quick jump, 96. Let's see if Scow has a little false start here, yep. Yeah, they say he was drawn off now by Colorado. So he reacted properly. Well, we'll wait and see. They're still discussing it. Illegal procedure, the preliminary signal against Colorado. So they'll move it back even farther against Colorado. Well, you still got that bionic eye, Tim Brandt, I see. Meanwhile, the penalty count goes two for Colorado, one for Nebraska, 20 yards for the Buffs, 15 for the Huskers. 20, ball is on the 37-yard line. Third and 20 for Colorado at the 37. Now we'll see Keenan's arm. I do believe. No, sir. We'll see Keenan run. Ball carried by Keenan, number 14. Doesn't figure. Scal, Reeves, and Spockman making the tackle. Colorado calls timeout with time one out. second. They will come on and the field goal. We've got a tie score. Nebraska one seven, second Colorado remaining seven, in the half. Tackle on to kick a field goal. One second remains in the half. Colorado seven, Nebraska seven. Larry Eckel is on to attempt a 52-yard field goal. The longest attempt for Eckel this year, and Nebraska calls timeout to make him think about it a little bit. He is one for three between 40 and 49 yards. This will be a 52-yarder. His longest of the year, 44 yards. There's the wind factor, 15 miles per hour. It is blowing into the face of Larry Eckel. Pete Shinnick is the snapper. Barry Heldon is the holder. One second remains. A 52-yard attempt for Colorado. It's short. Well, it was straight enough, but it didn't have enough distance. So Larry Eckel comes up short in his longest attempt of the year, and the score remains the same. Bit of a surprise in the first half here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. So that's the end of the first half, and we'll be back with our halftime activities after this commercial message. How do you do? A bit of a surprise in the Plains, Mid-America. Colorado has come west. It is 7-7. Hello again, everybody. Tim Brandon, Lee Gross Cup. And my first question to you, Coach. Any surprises? Well, I'm surprised in a way, but then I said at the top of the show that I felt that the strength of Colorado's team was in their offensive line, and if they could win the war of the trenches, they would have a chance. And they've been able to do that. They are really getting some good mileage out of their running game, and they've been able to execute the wishbone and do the things that they like to do in the wishbone scheme. And so for Coach Bill McCartney, it's really been kind of a textbook game plan in the first half, and I'm very pleasantly surprised. Good competitive first half. For years, Bill McCartney, of course, was at Michigan with Bo Schembechler. He was the defensive coordinator there and also a fine recruiter. And I think anyone who knows his coaching talents will not deny the fact that he is an outstanding defensive coach and they have some kind of been running to that football. Let's take a look at some of the things that took place. It was Colorado, ironically, that came to Memorial Stadium on homecoming and scored first. Well, it was quarterback Craig Keenan, number 14. And watch what he does here because he follows right in behind his fullback in part two of the triple option and then he slides just a little bit to his right stretches and gets the football forward right in behind Coyle and Symington and that results in touchdown number one for the Buffaloes. Then Nebraska changed quarterbacks. McCatherine Clayton went out and Travis Turner came back in. They went to the air. And it was Lindstrom number 23 who got in behind Hot Rod Rogers in the secondary and it was the play fake that set it up and that moved the ball down into scoring territory. 
Now watch Doug DeBose, the tailback here. It's just the power pitch. Good block here. Springs him by the offensive tackle. DuBose gets to the outside, and then he just uh, hands the ball to the official. I don't know if he was showboating in a little bit there or not, but he was very he was very happy to get into the end zone. And you know, I think we should mention here too. Before that touchdown, it was Colorado that had a tremendous goal line stand working. It was two plays from the one that they held Nebraska. Finally, the Cornhuskers had to take it outside with DuBose. So that's where we are now at halftime. And our score remains Colorado 7, Nebraska 7. We'll be back right after this. The Prudential Halftime Report was sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and financial services. The Prudential, the rock. It's strong. It's on the move. It's bigger than life. Can any new size passenger van let you tow up to 5,000 pounds? Meet Chevy Astro. It's the van that can. With more fuel-injected V6 Go, there's more power for you to tow. The only new size passenger van that lets you tow up to 5,000 pounds is Chevy Astro. It's the van that can. Drive today Chevy. Live today Chevy. Astro. Soon, hundreds of people will be here, eating a huge six-course meal. Some will get heartburn. There's nothing packed for heartburn. He doesn't know the Pepto-Bismol his wife packed for upset stomach and diarrhea is great for heartburn. Take the Pepto. Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, it relieves heartburn and most common stomach discomforts. The one that coats is the only one you need. My heartburn's gone. Bon voyage. When you were growing up, you learned you were facing a world full of competition. There were so many of you with all the right credentials. To succeed today, you need a way to stand out from the crowd, to make the most of your special kind of music. Introducing Amiga, the computer that gives you undreamed of creative power to work faster and more productively. With built-in color graphics, no other comes close to Amiga, the first personal computer to give you a creative edge. Quiet crowd. The last time Nebraska lost a homecoming game was 1968 at Kansas State. JoJo Collins, Loy Alexander. It's Alexander who takes Klein's kick across the 20. Out to the 30-yard line. So the Buffs will start with pretty good field position after that 20-yard return by Loy Alexander. <laughs> Just underway. Second half, Tim Brandt and Lee Grosscup along with you. Greg Keenan is the quarterback if you're just joining us. He was the starter last year. Third team this year, but Mark Hatcher was hurt. Wheeler got hurt in the first series. And Turner hands off to Weatherspoon, who picks up maybe two. It'll bring up second and nine, the ball on the 31. Colorado in white jerseys. Nebraska in red, 76,000 here at Memorial Stadium this afternoon. Wishbone attack, Keenan rides the fullback, pitches outside to Brown. And Brown is nailed by Mark Munford, number 41. Munford from Littleton, Colorado, playing with a little extra incentive this afternoon. Mark Munford, who has been out with an injury, just returned, and look at how he reads this play, gets rid of a blocker, and then comes up to beat the fastest man on the Colorado team, Mark Brown, and he makes him pay. He makes Brown pay at the corner. It's hard to believe, but that man right there, number 41, had arthroscopic knee surgery just eight days ago. Third down and three, the give. Smith cuts up, he'll be close, but he'll be short of the first down and they'll have to punt it away. So now Colorado only two of seven in the important category of third down conversions. And in the wishbone, you want to keep drives going. So third down is an important down. That's gonna bring on the kicking team. Well, Barry Helton comes on. 
Sam Smith is limping off the field. He may be hurt. Very helpful. The punter only averaged 31 yards last year. Borrowed six balls from the CU campus this year and punted 100 times a day during the summer and had his mom and dad shag the punts. Now he's got an average of about 52 yards this afternoon. This one hits on the six and it'll be down inside the five. Jim Solomon Wilcox down to Back it up. CFA College Football, this ABC Sports exclusive, is brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. And by Zenith's new 27-inch color televisions, the smart sets, the quality goes in before the name goes on. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Exceptionally Smooth Michelob, the beer of choice for people who are moving up. Where you're going, it's Michelob. And by Skoll Long Cut, the easy way to enjoy smokeless tobacco. Comes in mint and wintergreen. Easy to use, great taste. That's Skoll Long Cut. Helton's 57-yard punt, no return, has Nebraska backed up on its own three. The tailback give is Doug DeBose. Travis Turner is still the quarterback for the Huskers. Well, Catherine Clayton started, but then they came back with the more experienced Travis Turner. Tackle by Remington and Wilcox. Halftime stats, Cupper, rather even. Sometimes statistics can be misleading, but I think these are a true assessment of how close the game has been been today, including the bottom line, time of possession almost identical. Second and five, DeBose bangs it out, close to the 15-yard line, first down, Nebraska. And in the battle of rushing yards that we felt would be so important today, Nebraska had 107 yards rushing in the first half, Colorado 101. So in that war of the line of scrimmage, it's been practically even. Give to the fullback, Rathman cuts back. One more tackler and he would have been free to the outside. Rodney Rogers was there, Barry Remington, the most active linebacker I've seen in a while, number 40. Munford and Knox may have more talent. Remington runs to the football extremely well. Well, thinking back to 1983, you had Mark Shaleen at fullback, you had Mike Rozier at tailback. These two are similar to those two. But, of course, the difference, the quarterback position. You had Turner Gill in 1983. He was special. Second and four. Give to the tailback. DeBose, he's out to the 30. He's free to the 37-yard line. Doug DeBose. DeBose on one of his favorite I-formation plays, a sprint draw off the right side. Good block by Kalen right there, number 49. Moved to the outside, 23 yards on the play before he's finally brought down by Conley Smith, number 36, Mark. deep in the secondary. Mark. Turner to throw on first down. Snitzler at the 49 before he goes out of bounds. So this drive started at the three, and Nebraska now has the ball at midfield. Come on, come on, sir. Rob Stitzler, not particularly big, not particularly fast, but he runs those well-executed routes, sure-handed, 5'9", 170 pounds, as he takes the sideline cut. Pitch back to Doug DeBose. Doug DeBose spins, turns, drives up to the 47-yard line in Colorado Territory. Don Deluzio made the tackle for the Buffaloes. Deluzio, the third leading tackler on the team at his inside linebacker position. 63 total tackles coming into today's game. Colorado runs a 3-4 defensive scheme, but Kyle Rapold, their middle man, has gone out with an injury. They now load up on second and nine. Turner throws to the sidelines, out of bounds, incomplete. It was intended for Snitzler. 
Bill McCartney injured his back yesterday while brushing his teeth. Did not come to the stadium last night. Was late coming to the field this morning when the team came out for workouts. He is 0-3 against Nebraska. Tried to make Nebraska his number one rival. Thus far, it's backfired. But right now, he's in a dogfight 7-7. Third and nine, Turner throws over the middle, incomplete. Outstanding play by the linebacker, Barry Remington, who dropped back into his hook zone. When the ball made contact, he made contact and knocked it loose from Todd Frey, number 80. Easy to see why Barry Remington, number 40, at his linebacker position is considered the best athlete on the defensive unit, leading tackler on the team as he really smacks Todd Frey with perfect timing and execution. And now, Nebraska is four of nine in third down conversions as a result of that play. Dan Winger to punt, three punts this afternoon, averaging 42 yards. This one may bring rain. JoJo Collins, he was almost interfered with. Yes, There's he the flag. was. Yes, he was. They have to allow him space to make the catch. 33-yard punt, no return. JoJo Collins interfered with. JoJo, watch right here. Watch how he was interfered with right here after he signals for the fair catch. They have to allow him the necessary space to catch the football. He was crowded there by number 85. That's Rob Snitzler. Tom Osborne looks on with concern. His team sputtered last week against winless Missouri. They're having trouble now with Colorado. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. It's easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. It's easy. It's as easy as GMAC. With GMAC, buying or leasing a new GM car or truck is easy. Ask your GM dealer and see how easy it is. Financing a new car may seem hard, but once you know the secret, it's as easy as GMAC. It's easy. Colorado takes over first down on its own 21-yard line. Craig Keenan is the quarterback. He's a thrower, and they come out with two wide receivers. Loy Alexander goes to the top of the screen. Drew Fernando, 25, to the bottom. The give inside of the fullback. And he's close to a first down. Eric McCarty, he picked up about nine yards. He'll be one shy, I do believe, depending on the mark. And it might be a first. McCarty, number 32, having a good day from his fullback position. This is part one of the triple option. He starts over guard, slides out to his right. Marquez, number 20, gives him a good block. And then he just uses some of his own initiative before he's finally brought down in the secondary by Brian Davis, number 32. First down play. Marcus has nothing at all. Tries to pick the left side, but Nebraska was there. Scow was there first. And a host of other Cornhuskers came quickly. Next Saturday, our coverage of CFA football continues. Notre Dame against Navy and Florida State at Miami. We saw Miami last week. Strong. Testaverde, one of the best quarterbacks I've seen in quite some time. Looks a lot like Kozar in Stratcher. Strong arm. Notre Dame won big today. How about that? Check How about that win over USC. Check the game and your local listings. Keenan for Brown, incomplete. Greg Reeves, number 84, was right there. If he had turned around, he could have had an easy interception for Nebraska. Dangerous pass to throw. Now watch Brown, number eight, as Reeves is crowding him. He tries to come around him and almost has the ball in his hands. However, as I pointed out, if Greg Reeves, number 84, had turned around, the ball would have been right in his chest. He could have had an easy interception. Keenan now three of five, 32 yards, third down and nine from the 33. Definite passing situation for most clubs, not necessarily for Colorado. They do this time. Pass complete, first down. JoJo Collins, number 16, hauls it down. He has four yards to spare. That's a big play for the Buffs. They were two of seven 
in third down conversion. So now with that completion, they are three of eight. Washington. Carl. Jojo Collins, the wide receiver on the left, is running a deep curl in route after the play fake. The ball by Keenan is thrown well, and Mike Carl, number 42, is there to make the tackle, but that's good execution. Two Def catches for 24 yards now. Definitely one of the strengths of the wishbone. Every play starts the same way. Tough to read. First down play. This is Keenan. Turns it up and gains three. Ball carried by Keenan. Oh, what a player Jim Scow is. He's been active this afternoon. Big number 96 for Nebraska. Well, as I said at the top of the show, after three losing seasons, Bill McCartney had a choice to make. You know, he looked around the country. He saw that some teams in Division 1A were winning with the wishbone. He felt that because of his personnel, that perhaps he would have a chance to be successful too. Teams like Arkansas, Air Force, Army, in Division 1A football being very successful. So far, it's worked. Ken Hatfield took it from Air Force to Arkansas. Army, of course, made that big turnaround in Colorado. Went from 1-10 last year to 5-1 this year, and right now they are in enemy territory. Lincoln, Nebraska, and the score is tied at 7 with 8 minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. We can be a lifeline or a hard line. Born here about 9 a.m. You expect the best from us. We know. Some people think that when a company gets big, it stops caring. Well, as a system technician for AT&T, I know that we can be the difference between a customer's business going up in smoke or being back in business. Whether it's telephones, information systems, long-distance services, or computers. The right choice, AT&T. Today's Chevrolet is a little import called Spectrum, a spectacular combination of fun and practicality. We call it Spectrumality, solid, Spectrumality, price, Spectrumality, room, Spectrumality, technology, Spectrumality, spirit, Spectrumality, economy and more, all part of the new Chevy Spectrum, a spectacular combination of fun and practicality called Spectrumality. Keenan has this offense going for Colorado now. He came in in relief for Rick Wheeler, who went out with a knee injury. Reverse. It looks like Dan Drew Fernando was ready to throw the ball. Instead, tucked it away and ran it out of bounds. Number 25, Drew Ferrando, who they often compare to Fred Melindikoff because he wears number 25 and has the soft hands, gets the ball on a reverse. He's from Menlo Park, California, where our colleague Al Michaels resides. And he makes a nice play there. Even though he's a substitute, he gets a lot of playing time. Those guys have been having fun doing that World Series. They're fun to listen to. Good chemistry. I agree with you. Third and eight for the Buffs. Keenan throws and it's deflected, incomplete. Mark Munford, number 41, the linebacker for Nebraska, got a big call on it. And Colorado had no chance. And listen to this crowd, the whole stadium's rocking. All for the defense. Fourth and eight. Colorado will punt it away. Barry Helton is on. Munford only a junior, but the pro scouts are already building a file on him. Helton's been blasting the ball. Averaging 53 yards of punt this afternoon. Flag on this one. Penalty flags on the play. Keep your eye on number 41, linebacker Mark Munford for Nebraska. Keenan rolling out to his right, looking for Alexander. The ball tipped initially by number 45. Chris Carr is the man who gets it. Oh, well, we thought it was Munford, but it's Carr. 
Both linebackers did a nice job, though. They have to stay at home and skate along the line of scrimmage and read to see who actually has the ball in the option. And they get back to their hook zone. Helton, his last punt was 57 yards. This is a tail wagger. It's high. Hits at the seven and goes through the end zone for a touchback. A 56-yard punt for Helton, so they'll bring the ball out to the 20. That's where Nebraska will have it first down when we come back. You begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor-sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men. For the medal to be Marines. Who's gonna be at the Silver Bullet tonight? Oh. Sipping on a cold course light, partying right. Hello there. Who should have made the scene on a course light, Halloween? Come on down to the Silver Bullet. See who beats you with the Silver Here. Bullet. Who was that? I don't know, but he left the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Coming off their big win over USC, Notre Dame tangles with Navy. Or the Miami Hurricanes battle number nine, Florida State. CFA coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. Whoa, that's scary. If you're a Colorado fan. Seven minutes, 47 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Still tied at 7-all, Nebraska. Gives inside to Rathman, picks up six. Game ball thus far for Colorado has to go to Helton, the punter. Three punts over 50 yards, keeping Nebraska pinned in its own territory. That will fatten his average of 45.9 that he came in with today. That ranked him third nationally, 44.5 net. He's got to make his mom and dad happy. They were shagging punts for him all summer. Second and four, Nebraska. The boss is hit almost immediately. Tackle by Fairbanks. Don Fairbanks was there first. And everybody else in white and gold came quickly. Big third down play right now for the Huskers. They would like to reestablish the momentum of this football game. Awfully quiet in here now. Third and four from the 26. Turner looks to throw. Has a beat wide open. It's Nitzler deep. And it's complete to the 33-yard line. Rodney Rogers, the defensive back, was beaten badly. As was Lyle Pickens. Beautiful pump fake and spin by quarterback Travis Turner. There's the pump fake. Now he moves deeper into his pocket. It's Snittler, Snittler who gets in back of Rodney Rogers, number four. Loses his balance there, but makes an outstanding catch for the biggest passing play of the day. 41 yards. On the passing oh, play, DeVos picks up a couple of more, but not much. Dan McMillan was there to make the tackle. Big, big play for Nebraska. This place had gone deathly quiet. Nebraska was sputtering offensively, and all of a sudden, Turner lit the skyways. Snitzler was wide open. <laughs> Turner gives to Rathman on second and seven, and Rathman has a Nebraska first down. Well, the Huskers are starting to roll around. Let's go to New York. Here's Jim Lampley. All right, Tim Brandt, up in the Metrodome, Minnesota. Got a touchdown run in the last 10 seconds of the half from quarterback Ricky Foggy. They now lead Ohio State 12 to 10. There's Foggy, who scored the touchdown. It is halftime now, so no activity for quite some time in Minnesota. 
with the Gophers leading 12-10. Back to you, Tim. Okay, Jim. First and 10 here. Nebraska, the 22, threatening Colorado. Tie score, seven all, with 5.22 to go in the third quarter. The Bulls off the left side. How about that halftime score, Minnesota, Ohio State? Did you hear about the fight talk that Lou Holtz gave this week? No. He said, guys, this is the biggest game you're ever going to play this week. <laughs> Typical Lou Holtz humor, soften them up a little bit. Obviously, they're going out there playing fast and loose, and they're leading the Buckeyes now at halftime. Lou Holtz is one of the most humorous coaches you will ever hear. He also is one of the most motivating factors you could have in front of you during a ball game. Second and six, Huskers. Quick jump left side. DeBose has a freebie, but I think the penalty is against his own offensive line. Keep an eye on 65, Tim Roth. Tim Roth on the left side right there. Ball start. That's going to be costly. DuBose might have coasted in for the uh, touchdown there. Meanwhile, DuBose closing in on the century mark. 86 yards in 26 carries, a 4.1 yard average. Penalties now. Both clubs have three for 25 yards. Penn State 17-0 over West Virginia. Turner automalizes second and 11. Give inside to Rathman, spins and drives and turns for naught. Auburn 21-9. Air Force. There's that bone again. We were just talking about yep. it, Cupper. Utah had only lost once previously, my alma mater. Celebrating down in Tallahassee, and look at Oklahoma. Oklahoma now playing with their number two quarterback. Third and 13 for Nebraska. The fake to DeBose. Turner to throw. Looks across the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Roger Lindstrom. Number 23. Boy, Lindstrom's been so close this afternoon. He's caught four passes out of bounds. That one goes right off his fingertips. Turner straight drop back. A little play fake there to the tailback. Slides to his left and then forward in the pocket. He's looking for Lindstrom, number 23. The ball thrown a little high. But frankly, Tim, that is a catchable pass. He touches it. Has his hands on it. Field goal attempt by Klein. 42 yards. Long enough. No good. Off to the left. So after hitting nine straight, seven for seven last week at Missouri, he is now 0 for 2 this afternoon. Score remains the same, 7-7. Seven, seven. Craig Keenan is the quarterback. Weatherspoon picks up five. And that brings up an advantageous second and five. Let's go back to New York now. Here's Jim Lampley. Tim, great story. On the second half kickoff in Colorado Springs, Scott Thomas of Air Force went 102 yards to make it 28-7 Air Force. Of course, only seven seconds went off the clock, leading you to believe that Thomas is faster than Carl Lewis and Calvin Smith. He's got a kickoff return, a punt return, and an interception return for touchdowns this year. Back to you, Tim. Thanks, Lamp. Second and five here for Colorado. Fake inside. He rides the fullback and turns it up, and Keenan will be shy of the first down, but there is a flag. Brown comes up holding his wrist. He may be a little bit shaken up, the little halfback for the bus. Colorado indicates that the penalty may be against Nebraska. It is face mask against the Huskers. Second 
something seems out of sync for Nebraska. Talk to some of their fans, and they haven't been happy with the way the Huskers are playing. Of course, I pointed out, I said, you're spoiled. You know, with Nebraska, if they don't roll up at least 38 points, it's an off day, especially here in this stadium. Part of that being out of sync is being caused by a very fine sound Colorado team. More than 76,000 fans awfully quiet as Nebraska tries to hold the line against Colorado. Mike Marcus picks up five again. So as they continue their trend of four and five yard gains on first down, that's the advantageous situation you love to have for your offense. Bill McCartney, known as a defensive genius in his days as a defensive coordinator under Bo Schembechler at Michigan, has shown that he's also an innovative strategist as an offensive coach, switching to the wishbone this year. Second and six, rides the fullback, Weatherspoon, hit almost immediately at the line of scrimmage. Good penetration by Scott Tucker, defensive end. There are stories within stories, games within games. We talked about the rushing war and how important it would be today. Nebraska now 163 yards rushing. Colorado 134 yards, so it's that close. And it's a reflection of how it has turned out on the scoreboard. You know, Cooper, Nebraska's defensive end situation is critical. The four top defensive ends are playing, banged up. Tony Holloway's not even dressed. Tucker, we just saw him make a play. He injured his ankle in practice this week. Third and five. Keenan has a loose football, but gets it back. Maintains possession, but they'll be well shy of the first down. Greg Reeves and Mike Carl came up and made the hit. Lucky to get the ball back. They do not need any turnovers now. Keenan on part two of the triple option there. He loses the ball momentarily before Reeves and Carl bring him down. He was lucky he didn't lose that ball permanently. You know, Bill Yeoman pioneered that triple option, a variation of the open set. He had a quarterback in the 70s. Danny Davis ran it about as well as anybody I've seen. Not a particularly long punt this time, but he does get a Colorado bounce. Inside the 20, it'll be downed at about the 16-yard line. So Barry Helton doesn't get the long one, but he has a good one. The University of Colorado is a multi-campus institution with campuses in Boulder, Denver, and Colorado Springs. The University of Colorado, the Rockies' premier research and educational institution, challenges future leaders with exciting programs that hold a bright promise for America. Madrid, I see control. Working with NASA, students operate an orbiting research satellite from the Boulder campus, pioneering new frontiers. Across campus, the bodies of ancient mummies provide clues to modern-day nutrition problems in children. These are the visions students discover at the University of Colorado. the fullback just an off tackle play and found everything but tacklers in front of him 83 yards then he cuts back to his right and he shows you that he's not typical in terms of fullback speed because right here he has to accelerate he makes a good cut finally here runs right by number 26 in the secondary that's Paul Lyle Pickens no slim Pickens there as he takes it on in for the touchdown Dale Klein's extra point makes it 14 to 7 and hold the phone. Nebraska may be back. Talking about a sputtering offense. First down, they go off tackle. Cut it back against the pursuit. And Rathman, the fullback, touchdown, 83 yards. Impressive. Rathman is not your typical fullback, as I mentioned to me, because like Mark Shaleen, who we talked about, it was here in 1983. Rathman has 4-6 speed. Watch the quick hitting power play off the left side, and then he cuts back. To the Blankenship had the key block. That sprung him. He cut back to the right. Lyle Pickens has the last shot at him. 
and watch what he does here. He shows you he's got some agility and some common sense in the open field because he cuts back, breaks the final tackle, and then falls into the end zone for a, an electrifying touchdown that really has broken the game open here. I had a long talk with Tommy yesterday. He's quality. Well, now, can Colorado maintain the mental composure they need? Here's the kickoff. It's a squibber. Loy Alexander muffs it at the five, picks it up. He, too, has some running room and gets out to the 25-yard line. Nice return by Loy Alexander. Back to Tom Rathman. Talking to him yesterday, he said, we're going to take it right at Colorado. We're going to wear him down. Well, this is wear down time now with 16 seconds remaining in the quarter. You know, he had a 60-yard touchdown against Florida State in the game that we did here sip early September. And with that 84-yard run, Rathman on the day, 113 yards in eight carries for a 14-yard average. The crowd now a part of this game. First down to the 25, Colorado. Craig Keenan's your quarterback. The wishbone's your offense. Ron Brown. Not much. And the four and five yards they've been gaining on first down, the luxury was not afforded that time. Quarter. CFA College Football with Nebraska and Colorado will continue after this commercial message and a word from your local stations. This is gut check time for Colorado, a very young football team. 35 freshmen, 54 sophomores. The crowd at homecoming here in the Memorial Stadium is loud. Can Colorado maintain its composure? The onus is on that guy, Craig Keenan, the quarterback. And he answers pretty well. John Embry complete, a gain of eight. Play action fake. There's the completion to Embry, who was the leading receiver for them last season. Had only three receptions coming into today's game. As we look at third quarter numbers, you see that Nebraska now is starting to play their game. 246 rushing yards, 346 yards overall to 197 for the Bucks. Third and two. Eric McCarty, I don't think so. Maybe a loose ball. Nebraska thinks there was a fumble, and they think they have it. Colorado has had a tough time with turnovers all year. Had a tough time with third down conversions today, too. Only three of ten prior to that. Rathman's happy. It'll be fourth and less than a yard. Keenan wanted to go naturally. You see him giving the length needed. The cooler heads prevail. Good call by Bill McCartney, the head coach. Absolutely. It's no time to panic for the Buffs. They're very much in this football game, and they need to stick to their original concepts. Schnitzler and Siebler deep. Elk gets away another boomer, and it's taken by Rob Schnitzler at the 10 across the 21-yard line. So Colorado can't move the football. They're stymied. 54-yard punt, return of 11. It's 14-7 Huskers. A sea of red, enjoying homecoming. A well-rested Nebraska offense is ready to go now on first down. Well-rested because the last drive was one play, 14 seconds, 83 yards, Tom Rathman. There goes the Bose, and the Bose has room. But he fumbles Bumble. the ball, and Colorado has it. Rodney Rogers recovered the fumble by DuBose. But don't count out the Buffs yet. DuBose from his tailback position running a counterplay. He steps to his right, cuts back to his left. 
gets past the line of scrimmage. The hit there dislodges the football. That's number 23, David Tate. And it's Rodney Rogers, number four, who covers the ball in the secondary. And that's the biggest break and the first turnover of the day for the Buffs. Ball on the 35, first down. They ride Weatherspoon with it. He goes over right side for maybe about three. So for DeBose, good numbers, 95 yards, 22 carries, but that fumble hurts. I'm sure he would give a few yards back to keep the football. Second and eight for Colorado. Fumble! Nebraska's got it. No, it's no. still loose. Nebraska. Oh, my. Number 44, Weatherspoon, the, the handoff isn't there. A bad exchange between Keenan and Weatherspoon. The ball bounces around there. It looks momentarily like Colorado's going to get it back. But finally, it's Mark Munford, the linebacker, number 41, who covers it for the Huskers. Third time we've seen that in this ball game. Rathman carries up the middle. But on that option... When the quarterback rides that fullback and reads the tackle, he puts that ball right there. The tackle, he puts that ball right there. And if he's indecisive, the ball can go astray. Well, that's one of my complaints about the wishbone, and you and I have talked about it. I am not a great fan of the wishbone. One of the reasons I don't like it is that it's a high-risk offense at the line of scrimmage. Well, they've lost two fumbles to it. Keenan almost lost another one before he pulled it back. Earlier in the ball game, it is second and seven from the 39. Big hole, DeBose. DeBose up near midfield. It'll be marked at the 48-yard line. Doug DeBose. And that's going to put DeBose over the century mark. Uh, the, the Huskers, by the way, have had a 100-yard rusher in 28 of their last 30 games. DeBose starts right, cuts back left, breaks the tackle there. And that means that he's over the century mark five times this season. He led the Big Eight in rushing last year as a backup I-back. Not a bad tandem. Rathman and DeBose. So 109 yards now for DeBose. 23 carries. Rathman, who just carried the ball already over the century mark. Rathman's 115 yards today represents the most yards gained by a Nebraska fullback since 1979. Ron Shepard comes to the bottom of the screen. Rod Smith to the top. Double reverse. This is Shepard. And he's got running room to the 40. Knocked out of bounds on the 34-yard line. Looks like flag day on the sidelines. Gadget play, double reverse. Ron Shepard, the wing back, gets the ball from number 21. Paul Miles, the tailback, he comes around the left side and runs past Rodney Rogers, number four. He finally, he's finally forced out of bounds by Fairbanks. And we're going to see a penalty at the very end of this. Here comes Fairbanks, Fairbanks. out of bounds. And John Bennett, 46. I think we got a late hit, Tim. Well, there's no question about the fact that a penalty like that will kill you down the stretch. Youth. Although Fairbanks should know better. He's a senior. You know, it is ironic. We talked about youth and making mistakes down the stretch, and it's two seniors who get penalized there. 
Ball now on the 18. 11-14 remain in the ball game. Nebraska with the football. First down. Miles. Ball carried by Miles. Stop on the right side of the line. Don't forget, World Series action continues tonight. St. Louis Cardinals, the Kansas City Royals. Game six. Action begins live. 8 o'clock Central Time, 7 o'clock, or 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. 5 o'clock out there where you live. Lee Gross Cup on the West Coast. Second and eight, Miles again, straight up ahead. All carried by Miles. It'll bring up third and short. By 50. Huskers look dominant now, controlling the line of scrimmage. Third down, five. Third and five at the 13. Turner can't get the pitch away. Very nice play by Kyle Rappold, who was hurt earlier in the ball game, comes back to make a big play for Colorado. So that'll bring up fourth down and bring on Dale Klein, the field goal kicker. The man we featured at the top of our show, the man who kicked seven consecutive field goals last week. Rappold, number 91, is the key man there. 32-yard attempt by Klein. He's 0 for 2 this afternoon. This one long enough, just pokes it, and it's good. So, with 9.34 remaining in the football game, Nebraska now leads Colorado 17-7. Their big win over USC, Notre Dame tangles with Navy, or the Miami Hurricanes battle number nine, Florida State. CFA coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. That sums it up quite well. 9.34 remaining, 17 to 7, Nebraska, and they have quite frankly taken control. This JoJo Collins will let this big kickoff go out through the end zone for a touchback. And the Buffs will have it at the 20. You may have noticed that Nebraska wears 94 on their helmets. That's in memory of tight end Brian Hemer, the tight end who died tragically before the start of the 1985 season. Took his own life. DuBose now 23 carries, 109 yards. So as you mentioned, that tandem of runners, Rathman and DuBose, both over the century mark, and that's been the key to the game here, particularly in the second half. Remember now, the wishbone is not a big come-from-behind offense. Greg Keenan on the quarterback keeper. Scott Tucker is there to say, how do you do? How do you do indeed? Well, I agree with you. The bone is not a good come-from-behind offense. I feel that the wishbone is to the running game what the run-and-shoot is to the passing game. You can control, but you can't catch up. In the run and shoot, you can catch up, but you can't always control. The one asset, though, is that Keenan is a passer and was one of the national leaders just a year ago. Ball carried by number 20. Marcus. Mike Marcus pays the price for carrying the football that time. One thing about this Colorado wishbone, too, they do have some variations. They have the flex bone, and they have the wishbone with the two wide receivers. So they can open it up a little bit if they want to get into more multiplicity and flexibility and operate more of the passing schemes. They also have some flyers. Brown runs a 4-3-40. JoJo Collins can move. As can Loy Alexander. This is third and five. Keenan to pass. Deflected. for JoJo Collins and listen to this crowd. Play action fake. JoJo 
Joe Collins on the left running a hook pattern. Munford is there, number 41. So is Mike Carl, number 42. So is Greg Reeves, number 84. So he threw into a crowd. This is a low punt. It's twice. Schnitzler has it. Looks for a wall and is knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So Nebraska has the football, and the Huskers have the lead. 17 to 7. We have eight minutes and six seconds remaining in the ballgame from Lincoln. Today. Bill McCartney on the left, Tom Osborne on the right. You can't tell which club is winning by the looks of those two guys. Big turnaround by Colorado, though, over the years under McCartney. Great start for the Buffs. But the story has been Nebraska. And the Huskers have the football. This is Doug DeBose. You know, DeBose has gone over 100 yards, five of six games this year. He sat out of one game because of an injury. He averages 137 yards a game, and he's approaching that. Fifth in the nation in rushing. Heisman Trophy candidate. A junior. Second and eight from the 32. Take the ball. The boss bangs his way out across the 42. A look at Doug DeBose in isolation here, he being the latest in a long line of outstanding tailbacks for the Huskers. He cuts off a block there, breaks the tackle there, falls forward, carries two men with him. It's finally Rogers who brings him down in the secondary. We'll talk more about those tailbacks momentarily. Ironically, DeBose is the slowest of the four tailbacks at Nebraska. Open, and he drops the football. Rod Smith had no one around him and could not hold on to a perfect pass by Travis Turner. That's about as wide open as I have seen a receiver in a long time. Rod Smith, the split end on the left after a play action fake. Travis Turner throws a perfect strike, hits him over the left shoulder, over the right shoulder. He simply drops the ball. The late Paul Christman always had a line for that. So no wonder he dropped it. It came over the left shoulder and the right shoulder. Yeah, he was confused. No wonder. That's enough to confuse anybody. <laughs> Actually, I think of that coming over the left, but it's really the right shoulder. DeBose bangs his way out now. He's starting to rumble straight up the middle, and on second and ten, he picks up a good five yards. We were talking about working with you again. It's been a long time. Good to be back. The last time we were together, we were covering a game down in Arizona, and we had a heat factor. It was a heat factor. It was well over 100 that degrees. Was the USFL in 1984. I was talking about the tradition of IBACs, people like Kenny, Hip, Redwine, Mike Rozier, and now Doug DeBose. Turner on third and five, and he's nailed. Incomplete pass. Mickey Pruitt, 19, came on the safety blitz, and he came untouched. Mickey Pruitt, considered the best athlete in the secondary, has been out with a broken hand, but he's back now. Safety blitz. Play fake. Turner tries to get out to his left, and look who's in his face. Mickey Pruitt, number 19. Dan Winger to punt it away. Four punts, 40-yard average this afternoon. Oh, he blasts this one. Oh, what a beauty. Turns over and lands in the end zone. For a touchback, they'll bring it out. 54 yards, that punt. No return. So Nebraska now seemingly in control. Six minutes, 14 seconds remain, 17-7. Can't break his fever. He's in the hospital today watching the game on television. So, Brad, they miss you, but they're doing well. well let's hope he's feeling better by now. Good luck. <laughs> Incomplete. Greg Keenan didn't have much on that one. It was intended for Loy Alexander, and he just didn't seem to plant and throw properly. 
Good game for a long time. Colorado scored first. He thought that would be a key, 7-0. The Bows came back in the second quarter after a good goal line stand by Colorado to score. And then in the third quarter, it was Katie Barr the door. Rathman from 83 yards out, Pine, the 32-yard field goal, and there you have it, 17-7. Second and 10. The pitch back to Brock. Strong on the corner for Nebraska. While we're talking about folks in the hospital, pass along a good, warm hello from all of us to Billy Edwards, one of our ABC friends. He's in the hospital back in Houston. Get well, Billy. You betcha. Bill McCartney is a man that deserves a lot of credit for the way he has turned the program around in one year. Of course, you know what what Colorado did last year. The program has actually been down since 1978. The team has not been on television since that time. Al Michaels and I covered them in a regional telecast against Iowa State in Bill Mallory's final year. This is the first time they've been on the tube since then. Quick look at what's taking place in some of the other games. Third and seven. Colorado won't get the first down. I've got to believe now with 5-19 remaining in the ball game, time is a big, big factor. Colorado's not throwing. The leading rusher for Colorado today, interestingly enough, Rick Wheeler. He had 39 yards on five carries before he left the game. Now, no Colorado rusher has had 100 yards against Nebraska since 1975. Barry Helton to punt it away for Colorado. He's been averaging over 52 yards today. This one, not a high, long punt, but it does get a Colorado roll, and it'll go inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Don't forget, next week, our CFA college football continues here on ABC. We will have two games we will be doing that day. Notre Dame against Navy. Notre Dame, big win today. Jerry Faust needed that. Florida State against Miami. Miami, very strong passing game. We saw Bobby Bowden's Florida State team play and win here in Memorial Stadium against this Nebraska club. Nebraska's only loss. Check the game in your area with your local listings. You have a matchup of runners and a matchup of passers with that doubleheader. It'll be fun. Pinkett versus McCallum. Clock continues to roll at 420 now. Second and seven. Nebraska. Look at that. 45-43 final. Army. Paul Miles, right side across midfield, cuts back to the 45-yard line. Paul Miles, 5'10, 210 pounder from Princeton, New Jersey. 9.7 yards a carry as a sophomore. Got hurt last year against Syracuse, but he's back. Well, at times last year, he was a starter ahead of Jeff Smith. We mentioned that earlier. And really, you don't lose much at all when DeBose is out of the game, and you go, you go to Miles. Miles injured his shoulder, had shoulder surgery in December. Looks good now. First down, Rathman, right side. Kurt Koch makes the tackle. So Nebraska rather subtly has taken charge of this football game, and as time winds down, it seems that the Huskers are now in control. For some time, there was some doubt about the game. Got a 7-7 tie at halftime. Very even statistically. The big play, of course, as you mentioned, Rathman, 84 yards. Very little doubt that that will be our very little doubt that that will be our Chevrolet play of the game. There's the situation. You see those numbers. Turner on second and eleven rolls left, throws, has a man wide open. And Rod Smith makes up for the pass he dropped just minutes ago. Makes a fine catch on the sidelines, and Travis Turner was just decked. Here's when playing quarterback isn't a whole lot of fun, and people forget to look at the quarterback after he passes the ball, but watch what happens to Travis Turner as Kurt Koch, number 95, gets high and hard into his sternum. 
and or clavicle. First down, though, and Paul Miles. Straight by Hunter that time, and Miles doesn't get much. You know, you could feel the complex part of this game, and everything changed as we came into the second half. You could feel Nebraska with more enthusiasm. They seemed to take control, take charge. Psychologically, I think they had the advantage, winning 17 straight games over this Colorado team. I've been in games like this before. Maryland, Penn State. Well, there is a psychological edge with this sea of red, too. The fans here are very enthusiastic. Fake to Miles. Turner going deep. Intercepted. Tailback Travis Turner sets up behind the left guard. He's going deep, trying to find Vaughn Shepard, number two. And watch number 28, Tommy Streeter, make a leaping interception in the end zone to thwart that drive. Streeter not a starter, but he comes up with a big play here and turns Nebraska away. We've got 2.15 left. It's a jungle. Halloween costume? No, no, that's a Husker. Major Husker. make something happen and they have to do it quickly. A little flip pass by Keenan out to the right side, Dave Sanders, and Dave Sanders picks up about four. Have you noticed that early in the ball game, Colorado was picking up four, five, and six yards on first down. The last four or five possessions, they've gotten maybe three at the most. Well, you got to remember that they've changed dramatically since 1984. They used to average 39 passes a game. Coming into the day, they had attempted only 44 passes in the first six games. No! No! Greg Keenan, the quarterback. Two minutes and nine seconds left. Second and eight again. The ball's on the ground, and Nebraska will have it. Third turnover, and exactly the same situation. Turner. Puts the ball on the hip of the fullback, tries to pull it back out too late. Fumble. This is what I said earlier and why I have never been a, a real fan of the wishbone is that I think it is indeed a high-risk offense at the line of scrimmage. And if you're going to have high risk, I'd rather have it downfield. I'd rather be putting the ball upstairs. There's the play you talked about. He tried to get it to the fullback, McCarty. Never got it into his belly. It was on his hip. The ball was loose. Smith recovers. Huskers have it. Nebraska holds a 31-11-1 advantage in this series. And I don't think they've been within a touchdown since 1968, maybe. Paul Miles, nice move to the outside. And by Miles. He gains a few. See, I think that the I formation, I think the I formation has more flexibility. And you can still run your option plays out of the I formation. We've been talking a lot about option football. You mentioned Bill Yeoman. He brought out the split back beer in 1966. But you know, if you go back to the early origins of option football, you have to go back to 1941, when Ron Perot at the University of Missouri introduced the split T option. Second and 17, Miles, or second and seven, rather, on the 17, and Miles runs into Tom Reinhardt. That's Ed's brother. Ed, of course, tight end for Colorado that was injured last year. Let's watch number 97 from the end zone. He's the nose tackle right there. Shakes off a blocker, pursues beautifully. Brings down Paul Miles, number 21, for a loss. Third and 11 now, the I formation. Again, a reverse pivot. Turner's in a whole lot of trouble. That was a broken play. I think they wanted to option. And the wall broke down on the left side. Some miscommunication somewhere along the line. And 
Bill McCartney, who has been in pain today, had to take some medicine in order to show up because of the chronic back ailment that we have talked about. Well, we're down to the last five seconds. I don't think they're going to run anything. This is over. Put it in the record books. Miles, right side, will kill the clock, and that's going to be it. So, at homecoming, Nebraska now runs its streak to 18 consecutive wins over Colorado, and they extend the series lead to 32, 11, and 1. And a big win for Tom Osborne, as Nebraska stays in the hunt for the Big 8 title and the Orange Bowl. You know, they have won or shared the last four consecutive Big 8 titles. And they are now 6-1. and one. But Colorado may have turned the corner. They played respectably. And it was tied for the longest time at 7 all. We'll be back here to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln right after this. Well, Colorado knows now goes home and tries to regroup. Nebraska Started the roll again. The second half looked like the Nebraska of old. Lee Gross Cup, they started to run and dominate. After a 7-7 halftime score, the big play was in the third quarter but when fullback Tom Rathman got loose over the left side and broke loose for an 84-yard touchdown play. Let's watch it again. The fullback or the upback right here, number 26 is Tom Rathman. Blankenship gets the key block that springs him into the secondary. He traverses the field, gets back to his right. Now at the tail end of this play, Pickens has a shot at him. And this is not your typical fullback move. Watch this. He sees that Pickens is closing in. And what he does here is he makes a very decisive cut, a little limp leg, and on into the end zone for what turned to be out the, the decisive play for Nebraska. So Tom Rathman ends the day with 115 yards and one touchdown. Doug DeBose, the tailback, 125 yards and one touchdown. So that's the story from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is Tim Brandt with Lee Gross Cup saying so long from Lincoln, the executive producer of ABC Sports.